Greetings, YouTube. Um, I saw a video the other day on the Zed Not Alpha channel. He makes weapons and armor and things like that, kind of the way I do, though he's much better at it than me. Um, uh, and he had a video up about making a set of Thrasher bracers, which essentially it's a wristband that looks like a wristband that can also be turned into a set of knuckle dusters, sort of a stealth knuckle dusters. Um, and it was part of a $20 challenge. And I'd never heard of this before. I don't know who was started the $20 challenge. But the idea was you spend 20 bucks and you make a weapon. Or see if you can make a weapon. So I am going to take up the challenge. I am going to make a meteor hammer. And I'm going to do it with three items. The first is a candle pin bowling ball, which I picked up for two bucks. It has a nick in it here, um, which is where I will be using as the spot where I drill because it's somewhat flat and be a whole lot easier than trying to drill into the round parts. Um, the biggest eye bolt I could find, um, which will go in there after I drill a hole, I will probably use some kind of adhesive. Uh, I don't know which adhesive I'm going to use. I got Gorilla Glue, I got Wood Glue. We'll see. I'll take a look at what I got. Um, and then I have some 3 8 inch uh, diamond braid poly rope. This is 100 feet of it. It's tested to 244 pounds, 110.7 kilograms. Um, and uh, this is far more than I need. I'm only going to need about 18 feet of it, but for $10, I picked up 100 feet. So I've got enough for this project and many other projects in the future. I also kind of like the color. Um, so we have a buy-in here of $2, $3.30, $10 and $10 for $15.30, plus the use of um, some adhesive. Um, which I already have in my collection, uh, so I don't know if that counts against it or not, because it's already I already own it, and I'll be using a very small quantity of it. So, you know, we're, I'm pretty sure I'm under the twenty dollar limit here. Um, and I mean, I could have gone with a slightly smaller one of these, but I really wanted one that had this length, because I want to get this in as deep as I can in here. I want to get all those threads right up to the right up to there and then I'm just going to tie this on and I went on YouTube and I found a knot I think I can use I'm, I may have to monkey with it because I uh, get it not monkey ah, monkey knot um, because uh, I've never used it it's designed it's, it was it's designed for mountain climbing for tying off a rope it's a double figure eight I think what they call it um, so I'm going to try doing one of those because that should be the, the most secure knot I can come up with and uh, obviously this is not climbing rope, but I'm also not going to be climbing with it. I'm going to be swinging a big ball. Um, so the first task is going to be to drill out a hole in this. So time to break out my Makita drill, which I love so much, and get the drill bit out and drill a hole in there. So here we have the aftermath of the drilling. It's quite messy. I um, started out with a smaller drill bit, and then I opened it up with a larger drill bit in my wonderful Makita drill. Um, and I'm going to use um, some Gorilla wood glue and I've brought out a screwdriver so that once I get the, uh, the eye bolt started, I can put that in the hole and use it to turn it. Um, I don't know what this stuff is. <laughs> it's powder. This stuff, this stuff is a little this, but some of this stuff is just, it just, just literally just turns the powder. I have no clue what that is. This is going to be a pain in the ass to clean up. Um, <laughs> things you find out when you work with um, objects and manners that they were never intended to be used in, such as turning a bowling ball into a meteor hammer. So, next up is going to be putting up, putting in a little wood glue in there to act as lubricant, and then to start tightening this thing down. Alrighty, the eye bolt is in, and that's about as far as it's going to go, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> Things worked out a little different for me. <laughs> I ended up stepping up two sizes to drill the full hole, because that was just too tight. And then I used this really large bit to just put like a three-quarter inch um, sleeve right there, a hole, so that I could get inside the ball before I started to start to thread it. Because the problem is I was going from the outside without that little clearance section and I was coming off at an angle. So by giving that little oversized bit, I was then able to get the, the thread started in the shaft I had opened. And I tried using that screwdriver and it just didn't have enough, I couldn't, couldn't enough leverage. 
So what I ended up using is this strap wrench here. Now, kind of funny thing is, this is one of the the knockoff. No, actually, no. This is a proper graph. Sorry, that's a proper craftsman. It's a craftsman set of strap wrenches. And I got two of them. This large one here that I keep here in my toolbox, and I have a smaller one that's about three quarters of size, and I keep that in my kitchen because it is awesome for opening jars. Don't go buying those stupid purpose-built strap wrenches you see at like kitchen stores or, or in grocery stores. Just buy yourself a regular strap wrench. Opens jars like a dream. Um, and I picked up the two set for $10. It was on sale. So for a $5 strap wrench, and that's the only thing I've got in my collection that's going to hold a sphere and hold it strong enough that I could then turn it. And I ended up using my hammer here, and I put the hammer in here like this, and then I used it like this. And then I just turned it with resistance from the strap wrench in the other direction because this per almost perfect, that's exact, almost just barely fits in there. And that gave me the leverage uh, of steel on steel, so I really wasn't touching the wooden shaft at all, which is because there's not a mark on the shaft, which is nice. That's my favorite hammer. Um, and I took my time, and I didn't want to overstress the, the, the shaft because I was definitely putting more stress on that hammer shaft than was designed for. I don't have a steel shafted ball peen hammer of the same size. I have one up from that that wouldn't have fit inside inside here, so that wouldn't have worked for me. Um, and I don't have a crowbar. Why have on my car that might have worked? I'm not positive, but this was in the in the in the, in, the, in my toolkit right here in my office. So that's what I used. Um, so now this is in place. So now I'm going to clean all these tools out of the way and get rid of everything. Then I'm going to go look up that video on YouTube again and uh, see if I can figure out how to tie this knot that I want to use and tie it safely so that then I can then cut this rope to the length I want and put a small loop at the other end for a wrist strap also to keep the end of the rope from fraying too much. Um, because in theory you're supposed to have one end of this strapped to your off wrist and then you swing the other one as a weapon. Um, and then um, I should be done. So next up is going to be cleaning up this area and then uh, uh, tying the knot. Alright, so here we have the double figure eight knot and a stopper knot. I just went on YouTube and I looked at a number of illustrations there. Then I went to a number of pages where they had some step-by-step -step breakdown. Um, I will actually put a link to the two videos I used for these knots because I've never done them before, but they seem to be secure. Um, and I got I just a, I just put a, a loop in this end so that I can do that if I want to. Um, and I've uh, melted the ends a bit on both of these so they shouldn't fray. I just use a lighter for that. And there's, however, there's a slight gap here that I don't like. So I'm going to take my hammer right there and I'm going to go outside so I can uh, kind of give this a little tap on the, on, on the, uh, on the uh, cement block I've got outside. Use it as an anvil and see if I can close that gap up a little bit. Well, folks, there we have one finished Meteor hammer. Um, so I didn't use any glue. Um, I actually put glue in the hole originally, but I had to drill it out, which was very busy. I had to take my drill bit and go wash it off in the sink. So there's no glue in this, so it's just rope, the bowling ball, and the, uh, the eye bolt. That's it. And the eye bolt now has no discernible gap. It's a very, very tiny gap in there not wide enough to let the rope slip through, so it's not gonna, the ball, the bowling ball is not going to come off the rope. And this is nice and tight. I just gave it a few practice swings outside. Um, on, hit the stump that I use for my smashing videos. Some of, some of you may have seen some of those. Uh, that makes a nice thump when it hits it. Um, aiming isn't hard. You kind of have to know when to let go. It's you almost, almost, it's it's almost literally like bowling because I'm swinging this and I'm letting it go on the upswing. So it's very much similar to bowling itself. So that, that helps if you have any experience with bowling. The recovery isn't clean. I have, again, I have no training in this weapon. Um, so, but it hits the stump hard enough to move it. Um, but uh, it's definitely not going to be uh, a fast recovery for me, at least. Maybe at a shorter distance because I was a a good 10 feet away when I was trying this. 
maybe at a shorter distance it would be a little better. But um, this definitely has, in D&D &D terms, reach. Um, and it's going to pack quite a wallop because this is a candle pin bowling ball. This thing isn't particularly, I mean, it's not uber heavy, but that's solid. And uh, it packs some, some definite impact. And the nice thing is because you're impacting it here in this this zone here from pretty much this section here, you're not really putting a great deal of stress on the joint because the only thing the joint is really being used for is to swing the weight, which isn't going to put a lot of stress on those on this and to, to pull it back. So as long as you hit in that hemisphere against the object, um, I don't think you should be putting a lot of stress on that joint at all. Um, but then again, I've again I don't know how these were used in uh, true combat. I know I've I've seen things in martial arts films, but I have no idea how often these things were actually used in real combat in China, which is I believe where they were developed. The meteor hammer um, was developed there, I think. So there you go, folks. It's got the lanyard here, so I can hook that onto my left wrist. So so I tried it and I let it pay all the way out and. It's kind of it's kind of an interesting feel, but it goes all the way out to the end of the line, and it stops dead, and it falls to the ground. So you can't overthrow. Um, and I guess really talented practitioners can use this to like bind, wrap around limbs and weapons and things like that um, by overshooting and knowing how to pull back on it. I have no skill in this. So here you go, folks. This is under twenty bucks, and I ended up still got a whole heap of. A rope here so I got lots of stuff for new projects in the future so I think it's a pretty good deal um, for $15 and 30 cents so that's uh that's pretty good in my book so there you go folks my very own meteor hammer now after I show my wife this where do I store it because I don't think she's gonna want to keep it hanging around the house maybe I'll put it in the garage it'll hang nicely we're in the basement put it in the basement hanging off the rafters there you go so folks, tell me what do you think? Would you <laughs> want to swing your very own meteor hammer? Take my word for it, you can in fact hit yourself in the shins. Alright, so I thought I'd film some bonus footage. Here is the meteor hammer. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a martial artist. I'm not trained in this in any way, shape, or form. I have just come out here to show you that you can actually hit a target with this thing. And that's it. Um, so anyone who wants to critique my method, go ahead, because I don't have one. So essentially, I'm using underhand. I'm assuming you can do this overhand. I don't know how to do it overhand. So I'm just going to use an underhand, like bowling. So swinging it like this, like that, to give me an idea how it works. Now we're actually going to see if we can make a thock sound. I can, in fact, make a thock sound. Recovery is slow for me. I'm sure that there are better methods for recovering. I don't know what they are. That's My bad. composter! Yes. Just kidding. Your composter. I don't think I can actually hit the composter from here because it's uh, it's uh, further away than I think this rope will reach. Let me check. Can I actually hit that? Rope? Please don't break it. No, I can. But under. This is how it works. I am not skilled at this, but you can hit a target hard enough that you were definitely going to uh, harm it because that's not a light stump, and I am doing it. So here you go, folks. That's how you use a meteor hammer, at least how I do. Thanks.